Okay, so for this week, we're gonna be doing some training. Um, we're gonna take time across each and every day to teach you the Roman road to salvation. For those of you who have been in church for a while, this might be a, a simple or already learnt concept. For those of you who are new to faith or maybe new to church or maybe you're just too young, this is going to help you understand and equip you to help preach and evangelize and teach the basic gospel to your friends, to your families, to the people in the checkout line, whenever you can. And so I'm going to quickly tell you the five parts now and then we're going to go through part one today. And I'll just uh, reiterate that this is in its most simplest form so that we can at least get the basics down pat. And then from here, hopefully you're gonna continue to grow and continue to search the scripture to increase and develop your understanding. So the five parts are this. Part one, we are all sinners by nature and by choice. Part two, we receive eternal life as a free gift. Part three is that God demonstrated his love for us, his enemies. And part four is we must trust and surrender to Jesus as Lord. Part five is our assurance of salvation through Jesus Christ. So part one is we are all sinners by nature and by choice. So how is it? Simple nature and choice you got to remember this part there is a disposition there which is the nature part and there is the choice where we choose deliberately to sin we are sinful and we continue to make sinful choices <laughs> this is what we're born into i know it sounds a little bit like confronting but it's the truth and there's no shortage of proof in this i i remember when i was in grade two as a child uh there was a kid in my class named matthew he's a little bit annoying a bit obnoxious he was that guy that you know borderline bully but probably not too bad but it's grade two so everything's heightened and you're getting used to school and i remember he would spend the day just causing pain and grief and just annoying people and the bell rang for the end of this one particular day and he was pushing past everyone being his normal self and I just thought to myself you know what I could just re release all that frustration and anger and man I tripped him over I remember he started running for the door and I tripped him over and he he went down bad and he went so bad that he he headbutted I just remember the image of just he was a bigger boy too so he had a little bit of weight behind him and he headbutts this metal column heater and he splits his head open and I felt so bad or probably I felt like I'm gonna get in trouble here and so no one knew that I did it but I helped him up and I took him to the nurse's uh, room and he got fixed up and sent to the doctors they gave him some stitches and then I got given a reward for being that good student that helped out the kid that hurt himself and no one else knew but I knew that in my sinful nature that I decided to act in a way that was not not healthy not good not godly and that the result was that someone got hurt and injured but furthermore I then got rewarded for it temporarily out of deceit and so this is something I wasn't taught my parents didn't go hey Ben I'm gonna teach you how to be sinful I'm gonna teach you how to lie I'm gonna teach you how to be deceitful I'm gonna teach you how to be greedy and selfish they didn't teach me these things this stuff was naturally inside of me and and Charles Spurgeon the Prince of Preachers he says this and it pitches it or he frames it in such a way that I think is helpful it says as the salt flavors every drop in the Atlantic so does sin affect every atom of our nature it is so sadly there so abundantly there that if you cannot detect it you are deceived sin is in us by nature and we operate in it by choice but the good news is that not only does Jesus cover our sins, but also our sinful nature. We become new creations. So let's just look at sinful nature for a moment, and then we're going to look at sinful choices later. We have a natural inclination to sin. It's within us. Adam did this at the very start of time when he chose to, to rebel and he chose to disobey God and he sinned. And the Bible says because of his actions, we are now all living in the result of inherent sin it's now in us that curse of sin permeates through every living human being and it's passed down through generationally through our fathers and so we now know by scripture that Adam sinned and it's now within every human to come that there is now sin within our nature and it reveals itself through our corrupt actions through our thoughts through our feelings in other words and the Bible says this it reveals itself through our heart we're not only sinners because we sin but rather we sin because we are sinners we are totally 
born imprisoned in our original sin. Paul writes this in Romans 8.3. He says, For what the law was powerless to do because it was weakened by the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering. And so he condemns sin in the flesh. This tells us that one of the reasons and one of the things Jesus had to deal with was sin within nature, our ruined moral character. The second part, and we've said this, is sinful by choice. This is imputed sin and it it ruins our standing before God. It's talking about separating us from God. It's not an internal element, but an external element. And the difference, and I've mentioned this many times, sinful nature ruins our character and sinful choices continue to separate us from God. Paul writes this in Ephesians 2 verse 3. We're going to read from the Amplified Version. Among these unbelievers, we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, our behavior governed by the sinful self, indulging the desires of our human nature without the Holy Spirit and the impulses of the sinful mind. We were by nature children under the sentence of God's wrath, just like the rest of mankind. Paul uses the word here, indulge. And it's that whole picture of I'm making a choice out of my fleshly passion and desire to put it in a simple, very innocent term or illustration, should I say. It's like that time at night where you should be going to bed, but you're still awake and you get hungry and you have to make a decision. You could just have a glass of water and you could go to sleep and be healthy, or you could eat a tub of ice cream. And who out there knows there's been many times, or maybe this is just me, where you've chosen the ice cream or the Dorito chips, or you've done something you know you shouldn't have eaten, and then you've gone straight to bed and you're living that nightmare of a moment on the lips is eternity on the hips and your body is all out of whack. But that's what indulging looks like. And it's the same picture that Paul's trying to write where it's that choice of sin. We know now we could make a healthy choice. We could make a good choice. But that choice to be sinful separates us from God. We read in Romans 2 verse 23 that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. This is a collective umbrella statement that Paul writes to allow us to understand, one, we are all the same in our nature of sinfulness, and two, we're all the same by the choice to sin. This is what we're dealing with. So I want you today to understand part one is really important. We are all sinful by nature and by choice. No one is excluded from this except for Jesus. And why? It's because he was born of the virgin birth. He was not born of an earthly father. Therefore, he was not born into inherent sin. And therefore, he could go to the cross without having a ruined moral character. But he also lived a life choosing not to sin. Therefore, he could go to the cross as an unblemished, perfect sacrifice. And that is how we know right now that we are saved from our sin. Okay, so part one is all finished in its most simplest form. We've hopefully taught you that we are sinners by nature and by choice. Coming up next is part two, where we discuss the whole idea that eternal life is a free gift given to us through Jesus Christ. But let's just pray and let's just give this time to God. Lord, we just thank you once again for the life that we have found and been given through Jesus Christ, your son. Lord, we thank you that we are saved by uh, his grace and his mercy and his sacrifice on the cross from our sinful nature and our sinful choices. Lord, we ask that you would be with us today, that you help encourage us, help empower us to live a life through word and action that communicates the good news of salvation that we find in Jesus. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I hope you enjoy part two. Be blessed, church.